Workshop. Today we're going to be doing a playthrough of Unknown by Robin Dave Games. This game, Unknown, is a post-apocalyptic cooperative board game for one to six players. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour com to complete. I have actually only played this solo, so I'm not sure how long it takes with more players, but being solo with four players, doing a regular length game, so not a short length, they do provide short versus long or regular sized, takes me about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, my guess would be with more people, it might take a little bit longer because I can just make decisions and go forward and I don't have to converse with anyone. <laughs> um, but so it is a tile placement game. So out here, in, uh, out here on the uh, table in front of me, I have all the tiles that we're going to have to be exploring. You can see there's quite a bit of them, um, and I'll go through those shortly. But how this game works is uh, it's, it's an action-based game, so every player has a certain amount of actions. You'll all do these actions, then you'll have an enemy phase, and then you'll end by eating one of the eight food that we have on the board there, on the side of the board right here. And if ever you run out of food, you lose the game, or if any, everybody becomes incapacitated, you also lose the game. You win the game based upon the objective. So there are many different objectives that they provide to you uh, in this in this uh, in this game. I'm doing the first one, the easiest one, called Scout. Scout essentially means we need to explore every single one of these tiles. So these tiles will be in a pile. We'll need to explore them all and then have everyone get back to the base. If we do that, we win. Also, though, to make it a little more interesting, they have tasks, and I think this is really cool. So to make it a little more complicated, they have different tasks that you can you can do in the game. You can add one to, to any sort of objective, and so then not only are you completing the specific objective, but you're also trying to complete a task. And this task will, will give you a benefit once you complete it. So um, for you guys to see, let me grab the scout objectives you can see that so it's pretty simple just says um, basically scout explore all tiles and return to the base and so all players must survive all survivor meeples must be on the base and of course my fingers there sorry uh, the base tile and either healthy or injured survivors may f uh, may be forfeited and respawned at base to fulfill this requirement if there are sufficient resources to pay for the respawn and I'll show you all of that so that's the main objective. But to make it a little fun, I also have a task, just because I think these are so cool, um, being able to add these in. It will make the game harder, might even make it a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it. Um, okay, so this is foraging. That's the one that I'm going to use today. Derek West wants us to bring four plant tokens, and they're going to be those orange tokens, to base along with two medicine for testing. And now we have an additional action that we can do. So when we gather food, we'll also produce a plant token in addition to the food tokens. Regardless of how many food tokens are gathered at once, a survivor will only receive one plant token. This effect persists even after the completion of the task. Survivors may only carry one plant token at a time. However, with the trade action, a survivor may trade multiple tokens at once as long as each survivor has no more than one plant token at the end of the trade action. And then we have a reward. So once we get four of those um, plants, as well as two medicine to the base, each plant token that is traded to the base is replaced with one food. Food is important. Food is good. <laughs> so we're going to add that to it. That'll make it a little more complicated, but I think it's worth it because, well, first of all, I kind of wanted you to see it because I do think adding a little bit of complexity to this game is not a bad thing. Um, but second of all, I just I just think it's a fantastic mechanic because there's six or seven different tasks as well as 10 or 12 different objectives, and you can mix and match them all. I mean, that gives you infinite amount of replayability with this game. I mean, I will never get bored of this game. Love it. So what they do provide to you, so Rob and Dave are awesome because if you look at this, this is their player sheet, Okay. Almost everything that you need to play this entire game is on here. I'm not going to read you everything on here, but I just wanted you guys to see that this will be your player aid. They've got a bunch of these in here, uh, and I think there's, uh, there's six of them, one for each player, and they're just so incredibly helpful. They can give you quick guides of what the different things are on the tiles, um, tells you about all the different actions that people can do, um, it goes through the turn order, um, tells you about all the enemies. Uh, it's just... 
it's fantastic. So I will be referring to this during the game often because there are a lot of rules. The rule book is lengthy. It's 40 pages. However, I haven't read every single page, but I do feel like I have an understanding to be able to do this playthrough for you guys. I think I've played seven times now, so I, I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Um, I'm not also not doing a crazy objective. I'm doing a, a basic one, <laughs> so that'll help. Um, so first, let's go through the tiles. So I spread out all the different type of tiles that we're going to have here and how each game will start. Well, I, I shouldn't say each one because I don't know if different objectives will start a different way, but the basic setup will be this. Okay, so what you have is you'll have the base in the center, and you'll have your a minimum four players or maybe five, however many you're playing with. You'll have them all start in the base, and then you'll have one of each type of basic resource on the outside. So that's medicine, food, ammo, and scrap. And for those colors, ammo is red, medicine is green, M not medicine, food is green, medicine is blue, and scrap is yellow. Okay? And so you will have basic... Um, tiles, and those are going to give you one of whatever these resources are, okay? So we'll be flipping these up and, and you know, extending the board this way as we go through. And you have um, all of these basic single resource tiles. You also have these um, somewhat more special tiles, but they're still basic. So there's still that white. So you'll have these in almost every uh, objective or every game that you play. They are multi-resource um, tiles. You can either try and get, uh, you know, so for like, for, for this tile, you can either do ammo or you can do food. Yeah, sorry, I would try and put something in the back so you guys can see it stays in focus. There we go. So for like the bunker, if you look, you have red or a green resource you can obtain from that tile. And you can decide that when you actually try and um, gather that resource, okay? So we've got bunkers, we've got labs. Labs are medicine or food. We've got workshops, so they're scrap or food. And yeah, that's the three different types. So bunker, lab, and workshop, okay? So those are all other basic tiles. You also have a basic market tile. Now these tiles are pretty cool. There are three for three exchange. You can go to this tile and exchange three of any resource to get three of any other resource. Three food for three ammo, wh whatever the case may be. Pretty nice, it's a great way, and it's three for three, which means it's an even trade. You can always go to the base. The base has a trade ability too, but it's a two for one. So you gotta give up two resources to get one, not nearly as good, but you never know where the market ones are gonna show up but you're always gonna know where the base is, right? Um, so that's, that's the advantage. You also will start with one, two, three, four, five, six. Six basic monster tiles. Now these monster tiles, when you flip them up, you'll immediately spawn a specific type of um, monster. And I shouldn't say a monster because that is one type of bad enemy. It should be enemy. So you can see this is a monster tile, but there'll be other ones that say beast or or stranger or something like that. And these ones are a one time, um, when you flip them over, you'll immediately spawn one of that enemy or however many enemies are on this left side of the tile, okay? This number is a knockback and I'll show you how that works. Don't worry about it right now. And then you can still gather a resource from here. But this tile will not respawn more monsters or more enemies. It's gonna be one enemy, and that's it. So you have six of those. You do have two basic spawn tiles. Now these spawn tiles, they will spawn a monster, because you can see that's the type, and it's called a spawn pit. Um, that's your knockback. This means it stays out and it continuously spawns more monsters. Every other round, every other round, it's gonna spawn monsters. And the only way you can actually clear this tile is if you give up two scrap. You have to give up two scrap, and then you can um, clear this tile, flip it upside down, and then no longer will it spawn. But so those are a little bit more annoying, and they will continually spawn over and over again. Then you will grab five of these red monster tiles. This is just an example of one. This is the Devourer. Um, this will show you which type of meeple. That's the other part of this game that I think is so cool. The meeples look awesome, okay? You'll see. Um, this just shows you which type of meeple to use. Once again, when you uh, want to uh, 
uh, gather the resource from this tile. It'll tell you what it is, food, and you can see it's red. So it's a specific, um, you grab five specific ones of those. Um, I have used the specific ones from the first time that you play. They, uh, they tell you which, which tiles you should use that are the red uh, enemy spawning tiles. However, normally you'll grab a random assortment of five of them. Okay, and then the last are these green hazard tiles. Now each hazard tile has a different effect and does something different. Once again, here's your knockback. Exclamation point means go look it up. Go look it up on that sheet over there and it tells you what it does. And this yellow line that goes across it means that it, I cannot go through that tile. I cannot land on that tile. I cannot move into that tile. It blocks that area, okay? Each one of those will be a little bit different, and since we are doing this scout mission, it's part of the reason why I wanted to do the scout mission, we're going to be trying to um, flip over every tile. So as long as I don't die completely, I hope that I can show you guys every type of tile. You can see how they work, and it can just kind of help you when you play your own game. Okay. So all of these will be in a pile, and we'll be going through the, um, starting here in the base and going around and exploring. And what we'll be doing, and it, it's going to be actually very simple. Um, I think that's part of what's fun about this game, is your turns are going to be very quick. You only have three actions except for the explorer. The explorer has four. What you're going to be doing is going and moving around the board. You'll explore. When you explore, you'll put out a new tile. You'll get to look at the tile, determine where you want to place it. The only um, rules about placing tiles is you can never place a tile to make a 4x4 four four square. So I cannot place a tile here. If I'm an explorer from this tile, I have to place it here. Okay. Now, once I'm in this tile and I want to explore, I can explore here, here, or here. And I can explore in all three if I want it. Okay, the other thing I can do is I can gather resources, but I can also gather resources up to one, up to one tile away. So you see how there's medicine one tile away here? I can flip this and gather a medicine tile. Awesome. Okay, but since I'm on this tile, which also is the same resource as this tile, I can actually gather both tiles resources, flip them both over, and for one action I've been able to grab two medicine. So it's really nice when you have the same type of tile showing up around you because you can gather all of it at one time. And then certain people have certain abilities too, so that'll help too. Okay, so, oops, so that's what you're going to be doing as you go through. You're going to be exploring these tiles. We're going to be trying to get food to get us these plant tokens as well so that we can bring them back to the base and complete our task objective as well. Now, I'm playing with four different characters, the explorer, the doctor, the soldier, and the runner. There's, I think, 10 or 12 of them. There's a bunch. So I randomly chose these. Um, I'll just let you know what their special abilities are. So the explorer, he just has four action points instead of three. Great. The doctor, probably one of the strongest characters, I think, is the doctor. So all medicine costs for the doctor are one less, but they're never less than one medicine. So normally, if you're going to heal another player, it takes two medicine. Well, for the doctor, it only takes one. Also, any action, so it says action, gather, medicine, or any action that consumes medicine costs you zero AP. So if I go and heal somebody with the doctor, that actually doesn't even cost me any of my action points. I can do that for free. It's awesome, okay? The soldier, I find he's very important to help with the monsters, okay? Because first of all, all ammo costs are one less ammo to you, but never less than one ammo. So very similar to the doctor there. But the big, the big thing that's wonderful for him is his action for ranged attack or any action that consumes ammo other than a trade action costs the soldier actually zero AP. So he can get into the right spot and shoot for no AP. And normally a ranged attack takes two ammo. Well, he can do it with only one. So he will be doing, he'll be taking care of the monsters. Everyone else will be trying to just get him ammo. <laughs> All right, the runner. I actually really enjoy the runner. I like her ability. It's kind of unusual, um, but let me read it to you. Twice per turn, you may perform a move action onto a cleared tile. So a cleared tile is when it's face down. 
So she can um, twice per turn move. Uh, it may perform a move action onto a clear tile for zero AP. These do not have to be consecutive moves. This only applies to clear tiles, not normal, unclearable tiles such as base or environmental hazards. So just for an example, let me show you. If I had two tiles that were face down like that, and we had our wonderful runner here, she could go zero AP, zero AP, one. That's her first action that turn. Then she could explore, she could uh, gather, she could do lots of different things. But it's really nice because she can run around really fast um, once you have tiles flipped over. If you, if you have unclear tiles, she's not that helpful. But with the clear tiles, love it. And the reason why it's really important to have someone to be able to run around is because we're going to need to put more food in the base. We're going to need to bring these plants back to the base because every round will consume one food. And when if we ever run out of food and we need to eat another piece of food, we lose the game. So we're going to have to be collecting food, giving it to the runner, and the runner is going to be running back to the base so that that way we don't die. We have enough food to eat. Okay, so that's the four people that I'm playing with. Um... You'll see here that I have a meeple on their cards, and that's going to match the meeple color that's here. Uh, that's just so you guys can see, uh, and, and for me too, so you know which person is which. Um, you can get injured in this game or incapacitated. I'm not going to go into it in detail because you'll see it when we're playing it, but if someone is injured, they'll be on their side. They get one less action point. Incapacitated, no action points. And... If they get healed, they always go up one level. So if I'm incapacitated, I'll go to injured. If I'm injured, I'll go to um, fully healed, okay? Last thing that I wanna say before I get the tile set up, we'll actually just start playing, um, is that you can decide the turn order in this game. Another thing that I think is really great. So I don't have to go explore, doctor, soldier, runner. I can go explore, runner, doctor, soldier. I can go in any order I want. So you see these little random tokens I'm using here. This is just to help me remember. So when, when someone does a turn, I'm going to put a token there so I don't accidentally have someone go twice. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is all I think I want to say right now. So what, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set up for you guys and we're going to start playing through it. Um, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>